Times are changing. The ladies can do stuff now. What? Were you saying something? Look, I don't speak Spanish. I'll eat your ass. I will. I will eat your ass. Nergerotic.com. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you're beautiful. You do that every time I get here. It's so consistent. I really appreciate that. I really do. Yeah, I'm close to on time. Don't get used to it. My name is Gary Beekler. I come to you from nerdrotic.com. Nerdrotic. Nerdrotic Live. Nerdrotic Daily. Instagram. Nerdrotic. Facebook. Nerdrotic. And, uh... Parlor Nerdrotic, Mine's Nerdrotic, and my mom's VJJ. And today we're going to discuss how dumb American corporations are, two in particular, uh, Disney and Warner Brothers. And Hollywood's general disdain for fandom, which has been on display for four years, five years. Uh, and it's, we'll, you know, we'll get to the reasons why, and we'll try to work through what we do about it. And spoilers, it's what we're doing right now. It's talking about it. It's being uh, coming together. Uh, and there is a lot of beautiful mixed shapes and sizes and beliefs in this chat right now. Uh, and they, it's about breaking a narrative. And, uh, it was, it was cool. It was very cool being on sidebar yesterday with Viva Frey and Robert Barnes. That was a fun live stream. I hope, uh, if you haven't checked it out uh, after this one, go check it out. Uh, we went for a long time. That was good. And yeah, yesterday <laughs> I was supposed to do a nerd erotic junior yesterday and well, YouTube changed something. I figured out what I did wrong. I, I did. I mean, I did boom or something. But I do have an excuse this time. They changed something as far as stream scheduling. So I just went to go live now. Uh, but my internet was going on and off yesterday all morning. Probably shouldn't have even have tried it, but I did. Oh, well. Uh, I'm not, I mean, like the worst thing you're going to see me do is, I mean, yeah, uh, I've never made a secret that I, I don't do it on the show though. You guys don't want to see that. And, uh, but yeah, you won't get any dark side fills from me. You'll, you'll probably see me opening up one of these, uh, which I'm going to do later. Been waiting for this one. Oh, y'all know what DD means. Uh, yeah. So I can't go super long today, uh, because uh, I'm on a schedule and you know, I've got to get ready for tomorrow's Friday night tights with Nick Ricada, Nick Ricada is going to be joining us and next week it's tentative right now because he's a very very busy man uh but jeremy from the quartering is going to be joining us and i want to start this show by again publicly thanking data racer uh follow him on twitter data racer is an important resource and i'm not kidding you know it's it's the data racers it's the ichibakas it's the memologies where i get my news now you know uh, and these are all great resources that try to give you stuff. I mean, they give you their take, right? But there's a lot of unfiltered things there too. I mean, especially with data racer, he's simply just posting up what people have said. 
And these were supposed to be the good guys. You know, these are the good guys, you know, fighting hate with the worst hate possible. Uh, and they're not fighting hate. They're fighting uh, America, the world, uh, common sense, uh, the realm of, of common sense. And it's under attack. Uh, working class people under attack. Middle, middle class America, the UK under attack. And, you know, it's no secret that, that, you know, my audience, Geeks and Gamers audience is, is working class folks. It's people going to their jobs, living life. Normies, a lot of normies. Now, normies, I heard somebody in, uh, I think it was Midnight's Edge live stream, think that was a derogatory term. It's not a derogatory term. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's a term of endearment. Uh, normies make the world go round. That's, those are the people we need to capture the hearts and minds of. Uh, those are the ones under attack, the normies. Uh, the normies aren't expected to surround themselves with thousands of action figures. That's, that's, not, that's not a normal person. I understand. There's no shame to my game, but I understand this is a bit obsess obsessive. Yes, tad. There's a reason for it, though. This is kind of, uh, someday I'll get into, when I do my room tour, I'll get into like, this is a piece of art to me. It's, uh, it's an artistic expression of insanity. Um, yeah, yeah. So Disney delayed Black Widow again. They delayed, I, I keep forgetting this film is coming out. Uh, I don't apologize for it, but Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Now, that is based on a lot of normies are going to go, who the hell is Shang-Chi? And that's, a you know, Shang-Chi was, uh, it's a pretty good comic. It was a pretty good comic uh, that uh, came out after the, the Kung Fu craze, the Bruce Lee craze of the 70s, early 70s, excuse me. And uh, it was Shang-Chi, the master of Kung Fu. Uh, it had spectacular art at times, pretty good stories. It lasted a long time. It did. It, it, it had a good long run and it sold a lot of comics. As a matter of fact, Shang-Chi, the master of Kung Fu outsells every single comic book, American comic book that came out, comes out today. And you could probably times that over the last couple of years and it outsells everything. Uh, it used to sell like a lot of other comics do in the hundreds of thousands when comic books were on speed. Spinner racks in 7-Elevens and your local grocery store, your local corner store, at your, at your Kmarts. It, it, they were everywhere. Uh, but now they're only in, what, a couple of thousand comic shops. There are some comic books in, uh, in Walmart. That was an unfortunate story that we're not going to get into. Uh, and... Yeah, it, it's, it's a damn shame. There's still a huge market for superheroes, for comics. It's the unwillingness of the publishers and Disney and Warner Brothers to make what people want. Uh, as I said yesterday in the stream, Disney is now in the business of making truth. And now it's not truth. They're creating a narrative for reality. We're all in Disney's reality show, and we're all just little characters and pawns and consumers that they can manipulate. Now, back to publicly thanking Jeremy and Data Racer. They did some fine work last Friday after our show ended. There was a lot of stuff going on, right? So there was the 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 Zack Snyder Geeks and Gamers thing, which to me, uh, I believe ended with Jeremy's video on Sunday. I think he said everything that he needed to say. He stood up like a man and took responsibility because that's what m men do. That's what men do. And uh, I think everything that was said needed to be said. Otherwise, we're just spinning our wheels after that. Now, more interesting was what led to everything before that was, I believe, that Medium blog that uh, and mentioned yours truly, my good friend Ryan Kinnell, uh, Jeremy, both Jeremy's, the two Jeremy's, you know, there's a movie called the two Jake's. Somebody should do something with the two Jeremy's on that. Just saying, um, the two Jake's was a sequel to Chinatown directed by Jack Nicholson. And it wasn't very good. Um, it was okay. So, uh, they, Jeremy and data racer exposed who was behind it. Right. And who was behind it was, I'm not going to mention their names. Um, 
but their names were out publicly on a website. So, you know, that's it. You get what you get. There are consequences for actions, especially when you try to deplatform people, when you try to take food out of my kid's mouth. That's what you're trying to do. And with other YouTubers as well, you're trying to take away their rent, their mortgage. And we have an ever, you know, this whole narrative of YouTube isn't a real job. You could have fooled me. You could have fooled me. But more importantly, more importantly than that is you guys, is you guys. They're trying to silence you, uh, disgrace you. Every time they say that geeks and gamers is a hate group or, uh, or, or we're part of the, all uh, right. Um, they're saying you are. And these are, you know what I, I share subscribers with probably with, with John Campia, with, with a lot of people. So a lot of people just want to talk about nerd stuff, good and bad and ugly. Uh, and they don't really want to, we, we, most of us do not discuss politics at all. I will lightly get into it when it comes to me leaving this state, but I leave it there. I've always said, uh, you know, and, and part of YouTube is denouncing or, or is stating the obvious. So we, of course, uh, I think I wake up in the morning believing most people are against hate. And uh, uh, most people are not racist. Uh, and the, the, critical race theory of white supremacy is something that the corporations have figured out how to sell. And I don't believe that, uh, there is a vast conspiracy it, and it's getting weird. It's getting weird. Um, I'm not for supremacy of any kind. And occasionally you have to state that. And you know, it sounds insane because it is because it is, but they don't care. They don't care. This blog achieved what it set out to do it didn't expect you to read the whole thing that's why they purposely made it wrong filled it with and ryan said this they filled it with plenty of information tons of information that uh sorry i got the sniffles that uh they know you won't read and it puts plenty of keywords in the algorithm uh, we did, uh, I searched this on Friday Night Tights, and this was suggested to me by Stargate 404 in a member's stream. So thanks, Star, Stargate 404. He uh, asked me to search IST, IST, in the article. And it came up 180 times. Now, there are some words with IST in the middle that it did bring up. Uh, my count was, uh, we discount 40 of those words. So 140 times there was an IST. It was a misogynist or a racist, uh, and that's not even count. You know, uh, Supreme Sandwichist, and that's all they needed to do: associate our names, uh, plop our names in there once or twice, and then repeat that 180 something times. It gets in the algorithm, and where you know they mentioned it yesterday when you search my name, you know, uh, it says racist, racist, right next to it. That was actually going down for a while. Now it's been pumped up because of this article they've done. So remember what Gina said? She was quoting somebody else, but remember what Gina said? And this goes not just for me. This goes for all of you guys and everybody on this platform uh, who's in this battle. Uh, Jeremy from The Quartering, Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers, uh, As, Odin, Comics Division, Ryan, Lethal Lightning, uh, Abu Nas, Fatal J, every, all of us. The gospel, according to Mark C, everybody in the Dark Council, Drunk 3PO, shout out to Drunk 3PO, all of us. And you. We have to break this narrative, uh, and we do have to bring it up, and it is important because if we don't, if we lay down, we're laying down for you. And it's good that we're reminded of that. Uh, it's something we can never, ever forget. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I thank you for your support. Again, I thank Jeremy and Data Racer for exposing these two women and, and showing that they have, you know, peripheral involvement with Disney. Now, I was called out erroneously 
by another YouTuber stating that I said that a Lucasfilm marketing department was behind this. No, I read somebody else's comment saying that. I did not state that. Initially, I believed it was too, it was just another feminist podcast trying to clout chase, trying to get a name for themselves. So you go after the big boys and girls. And that's all I thought it was. And that's what I still think it mostly is. What's interesting is they had a lot of support from Disney employees. So actual Disney employees are, instead of, I don't know, working on Star Wars, working on the MCU, are trying to silence you because you don't like their product. And you state exactly why you don't like their product. Remember back in the early days when we were criticizing things and they uh, always said, it's not real criticism. They just say they hate it without a reason. No, we, we really get into the reason. And a couple of years ago, even when I was saying it out loud, it sounded insane, but I was noticing it over and over again. And I had to say something. And a lot of you noticed it too. A lot of you noticed it before I did. Um, there are some of you who noticed this stuff coming prior to the year 2000. Okay. Uh, we discussed it yesterday. It has been going on for the better part of 15 years, slowly but surely infiltrating every, uh, every part of our entertainment, our escapism, our culture. And I don't think there's one puppet master. I think it was just like-minded people silencing the other side and making it so hard <clears throat> Because I think, well, most people don't, again, want to can't wake up and want to cancel somebody and don't want to look up and see if somebody made a mistake. I'm talking about a real mistake, not anything creepy, 10 years ago and trying to get rid of them. So you're always on the defensive, right? Uh, I've never read The Art of War, but I, I'm sure there's something in there that says always keep, I'm paraphrasing, always keep your enemy off solid ground. You know, always keep them backing up, right? And that's what they've been doing. And that's how they've been winning. And we uh, apparently have been winning, finally, by just being ourselves, stating the truth, having no shame to our game. I mean, YouTube 101, uh, you can't give a fuck. You can't give a fuck what other people think. It's, it's just, it'll drive you nuts. You know, uh, I always say, you know, like read the comments, but don't take, don't take everything to heart and don't let it get in your head. The positive and the negative. Uh, cause you know, a lot of times there's some great comments that are constructive criticism that I have listened to and taken the advice. Uh, it's been very helpful and I've had some great emails that were critical, but they were, they were, uh, well, they were kind and critical. They, they were, they, they came in, they, there wasn't an attack. They just said, Hey, I've been watching and they were actually a viewer and they gave some advice. I'm like, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I like that. No problem with that. But this association is starting to work so much that it requires Warner brothers and Disney. If they're going to, uh, I mean, they, they can't. It requires these companies to be silent, right? So if they're seen to even try, you know, eventually we're all going to have to come over and talk anyway. Like whenever this is all over, it's going to have to be sitting down and talking and working things out and finding middle ground. Uh, how we get there, I don't know. We're so far away from that. But right now the companies see us that way because of the narrative that was spun by their own employees, by people associated with them, by their uh, access media and mainstream media companies that they own. So they are responsible. They are absolutely responsible. You, it always comes from the top, one way or another. And that's why we got to keep our eye on the prize. Uh, that's why I've always stayed away from uh, inter-YouTube drama and will. Uh, because it doesn't really achieve any goal I have set out. It, it doesn't. It doesn't help at all. Not that I have too many goals. I do this one day, one day at a time, and I kind of take things how I see it at the moment. 
uh, and try not to get too emotional about it, but it's hard. It's hard when you uh, get uh, disrespected every day. Uh, when you just want to support these things. Now, there's the uh, there's also the argument that, uh, you know, this is a losing battle. We shouldn't even fight it. I don't believe that. It, it might seem like that way. And, yeah, we might eventually lose. That is certainly a possibility. Doesn't mean you don't try. If you care about something enough. You know, it just depends on how much you care. Now, I uh, and I'm not judging but I think it, it helps a lot uh, if you're going to cover pop culture, if you're going to review a movie, review a TV show, or even talk about it peripherally to watch it, to actually watch it. You know, like if you're going to talk about the Snyder Cut and, you know, you don't know if it's good or bad until you see it. Yeah, it's four hours. So what? I have no problem sitting through a four hour superhero movie. I'm a nerd. I'm a nerd. And I, yeah, so I read all the comics, I read all the books, and if I get, if I stop, you know, like I am this close to just like being where I was right after I saw The Last Jedi with Star Wars is just not talking about it. I, I, I'll have to reassess over the next month. But honestly, I, there's nothing. I don't even care anymore. They can say something stupid. If they attack the fan, sure, I'll bring it up. But damn it. As far as their content is concerned, I, I don't care. I don't care if it's even good. I, I, like, I don't care if Boba Fett's good in some people's eyes. It's not a brand that interests me. I think it's just lame. It's old and tired and lame. Now, I know there's a lot of uh, prequel fans out there, but just remember you know, how Star Wars went through a bit of a lull right after the prequels ended. Uh, with a, with a lot of the normies and stuff because there was so much ill will towards the prequels at the time. Now time has been kind to them and the Disney trilogy has put a whole new, uh, shined a whole new light on, well, maybe it wasn't as bad. You know, it, it's that saying, it, it couldn't get any worse. Never say that because it could, and it did. And it, it helped the prequels a lot. And you know what? Zack Snyder's Justice League. I think it helped a lot that it was filmed a few years ago and it doesn't have a bunch of identity politics in it. It's just a superhero movie, you know? Uh, it, it's like Michael Bay films. People hated those things. Um, I was hot and cold on it, but uh, now people are just like, hey, yeah, they're shaky. They might be a little annoying, but they're not filled with identity politics. So, yeah, it can always get worse. It can always get worse and it might get worse before it's get better. It gets better. And that's, that's what brings us back to the MCU. The MCU, you know, it's planned out in advance. Unlike Disney star Wars and other and Warner brothers, they actually have a plan for the MCU and they've, but recently they've had to shift it and you can tell, and you know what derailed the MCU. Let's go all the way back. You know what derailed the MCU besides Disney purchasing Marvel? And and listen, I don't know if it, it, it might have, you know, fl fluttered out under Perlmutter. It probably would have. Uh, Kevin Feige deserves his respect. He's done something that nobody will ever do again. Uh, Hollywood should be named Feigewood. Uh, it's, the greatest it's the greatest franchise ever, uh, even more than Star Wars. It's uh, It had a lot of very good movies. Uh, well, you know, it had a lot of very good movies, had a lot of me very good, mediocre to bad, of course, but th it's the most successful franchise of all time. And while I do not believe they stuck the landing, they damn near did, which is incredible. Really? If you think about it, especially with Disney involved, that's incredible. They had a plan, but they were derailed by one single movie. Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman derailed the MCU. Because that's the one time DC beat Marvel and embarrassed Marvel and exposed a weakness in Marvel. At the time, they didn't have rights to a lot of their more important female characters. And let's face it, Mar Marvel does not have and will never have a Wonder Woman. You can't just make a Wonder Woman. Uh, Wonder Woman is the female Superman. She's been around for decades. She is a good character. She's had a TV show. People love her. She's universally loved. 
within uh, within comics. She's had some very good comic book runs, you know, uh, that, very respectable, good comic book runs. She's been, and uh, that's and that was the first time anybody had seen her on the big screen. So of course, and, and they made a decent movie. It's varying degrees of how much you like it, but they made a decent movie that uh, damn near made a billion dollars with no connection to any better movies at the time. Everybody was down on DC. So Marvel was embarrassed and they had to redo their entire schedule to make a Wonder Woman. Now they were trying to do it with Captain Marvel in the comics before Wonder Woman came out. They were trying to make Captain Marvel their Superman and their Wonder Woman. And it failed and it failed again and then failed again and then failed again. And it's still failing to this very day. Of course, they had a hit movie that made more than Wonder Woman because it was sandwiched between two of the most anticipated sequels of all time. We all know that. But now Marvel had to play catch up and give Black Widow a movie much later when they could have done it sooner, like right off the heels of Winter Soldier would have probably been better. And we all know that if they made a Black Widow movie like they made Daredevil, made it a rated R, hardcore, violent movie, it it could be successful. Absolutely could be successful. Make it a hardcore rated R action film. Uh, lots of violence, lots of action. Uh, but now we're going to get this PG 13 fair and while he can work for captain america because quite frankly he's a more popular superhero but you know black widow is is popular but pg-13 is just going to be marvel formulaic and it's going to be a downer compared to endgame that's that's the problem you have when you build up to this huge event there's always a letdown and i've seen this time and time again at, at the comic shop you know, uh, Marvel got addicted to events towards the uh, end of 2000, well, 10, 12, 13. But when Civil War started, it led into this, it leaded, it led into this new era that was interesting to say the least. And it led into uh, Bucky, Captain America, Brubaker. It was like some good shit. But they kept the momentum going. So the Koof broke the momentum, and now they're going to come back, and they're going to have this boring movie that's probably going to look a lot like Falcon and Winter Soldier did. And Falcon and Winter Soldier, the first episode anyway, was boring. It was boring. I like the I like the action scene in the beginning. I thought that was cool. I like Fa- Falcon's costume. It looked great. Uh, I like them showing the use of his powers. And then uh, I was on a fishing boat, and he wasn't getting alone, and Bucky had... PTSD, which was more interesting. Um, and then he, he there was a date, and then they introduced um, up Captain America. <laughs> uh, Wyatt Russell, Captain America, who looks ridiculous under that mask. Just ridiculous. And I think that's uh, what Black Widow is going to be like. Plus, it's written by Jack Schaefer, who recently said, as reported by Bounding into Comics, doesn't know how to read a comic book and didn't know who Mephisto was until the press for WandaVision. Yes, she wrote WandaVision, which was a total disappointment. And she was involved in Captain Marvel. So it's this new era of Marvel. And what they have done is they they have skipped so many good stories. They, for one, for Cap, with Captain Marvel, they shit canned one of the greatest runs in Marvel history. And it's Jim Starlin's Captain Marvel run where they introduce Thanos. They, they just threw it all away for an intersectional Captain Marvel. Um, there is so many Black Widow stories you can adapt, but you know what? I Last time I checked, Marvel has rights to Daredevil. And Black Widow was, well, she was in the Daredevil comic. It was Daredevil and Black Widow for a while. They're very connected. Uh, and you could have done something with them. Nope, they're skipping all that. They're skipping all. They're skipping the Ed Brubaker run uh, as Bucky as Cap, which is absolutely brilliant. I've said this before. I had people coming up to me when they were getting it, and it was like a good six months in, and they're like, "You know what? It would be cool if they kept Steve Rogers dead and just left Bucky as Cap." I'm loving this. Of course, they didn't, uh, which I think was a mistake, but. Uh, 
But now, you know, you get in the first episode of Falcon and Winter Soldier, like Steve is gone, he's not coming back. Captain America is not coming back. So they got rid of Captain America and Iron Man, and they're screwed because their next three movies are Black Widow, Shang-Chi, which, let's be real, if uh, I, I'm, I'm, I would be semi-interested if I thought it would look like the comic, but there's no real look for Shang-Chi that they could use. Uh, that would look like the comic at all. So it's just going to be an action movie. I don't know how it's going to play, and maybe it's just a movie made for China. I don't know. And then there's the Eternals. So Shang-Chi and the Eternals, we haven't seen a frame of footage from, and apparently they're done. I wonder why. Why haven't we seen it? Uh, it's because it probably sucks. So they made this plan a couple of years ago, and it was just supposed to be, hey, Endgame ends, then we got some Disney Plus stuff and these movies. And at the time, that probably would have worked. And then a year later, we get Doctor Strange. You know, we got Spider-Man, Doctor Strange. So they don't really lose the momentum that much. But now they have. They've delayed the movies, and now Disney essentially bent the knee, and they're going to put it on Disney Plus at the same time they put it in the theaters, screwing the movie theaters that just got a big bailout from you and I. Uh, but they don't care. They don't care. They could save the movie theaters. More on that later. And, I mean, you know, Black Widow might be good. It might be good. But it's written by Jack Shaver, so I don't think so. I don't think so. So, there isn't going to be a Marvel movie that pe that's really interesting until next year. And and a lot of people have said, like, Endgame kind of ended it for me. That was it. And Hollywood and the movie theaters need the MCU. Oh, my God, do they need the MCU. So so Warner Brothers screwing the, the, the movie theaters is one thing. Let's be real. Most of their summer blockbusters... Busters probably wouldn't have been massive hits outside of the Suicide Squad. Um, and uh, King Kong and Godzilla is coming out next week, and I couldn't believe it. I've got showtimes. I've got actual showtimes where I can go see it uh, next week here in California. But that that's still a big if. But, like, Marvel, the MCU, the brand was so strong. You know, Black Widow would have done well. Absolutely would have done well. I, I don't think it would have flopped. Uh, the Eternals? Shang-Chi? Now, I don't think anybody expects Shang-Chi to make a billion dollars. But, again, investors don't give a shit about that. They're like, it's a Marvel movie. They're supposed to they're supposed to make a billion dollars and then they're well, it's actually just one character. I don't care. It's a Marvel movie. It's supposed to like Captain Marvel was one character, made a billion dollars. Why didn't this one make a billion dollars? And none of these movies are gonna make a billion dollars because we got half as much theaters, maybe a third. Uh, and it's not gonna be full capacity, and then there's people still scared who don't want to go out at all, even when it is gonna be okay if that ever happens someday. As just told me, I talked to him this morning. They're thinking about locking down the UK again. Are you serious, guys? Oh, so sorry if that's true. Well, that means it's coming for us too. Um. So, so yeah, uh, are you going to pay thirty bucks to see Black Pan, uh, Black Panther, Black Widow? Uh, on. I, I think I would actually rather go to a theater and watch it than watch it for thirty bucks on Disney Plus, which isn't. I mean, it's not as bad as HBO Max, but it isn't great. It's not great. Uh, and I'll see it for review purposes. If I didn't have a channel, would I run out and see Shang-Chi in the theater? Probably not. That would probably be... No, Captain Marvel would have been the first one I missed if I didn't have a channel. I wouldn't have gone to Captain Marvel, but I had to see it. Uh, the Eternals, definitely not. I'll be honest. I love Kirby. I didn't like the comic that much. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, let's get to, I've got to get to some super chats from yesterday first. Uh, and we'll get, uh, and, and it starts out with Mr. Pants for $5. And this is from yesterday from the, uh, we'll call it the vape stream. Uh, moist. Uh, hail to the moist. Uh, I want to thank, you guys are, are fucking awesome. I, I don't tell you this enough. I love you guys. On Friday Night Tights, 
We had our biggest show ever last Friday. We had we were we were a a pubic hair away from nine thousand viewers. Nine thousand viewers. Now it's not the biggest live stream I had in the channel. That was twenty four thousand viewers for Game of Thrones, but that was the biggest Friday Night Tights. It's had the most views since then. It's the most popular. It has the most likes, and it was a crazy chat in the beginning until somebody said moist. And then it turned into a fun chat. See, you can kill things with humor. And that's how we have to battle this, by the way. Mockery. Mockery. Look at Mikey Gussler. $50 yesterday. He said, he, I liked your review, but there's one thing I want to point out that other people, including you, seem to think. Dark Side wasn't after anti-life equation in the history lesson. It's just another planet to conquer. After his defeat, then he looks for it. Well, but the anti-life equation was there in the history lesson. Mikey, I mean, when, when Darkseid jumps out of the hangar, of, of that little hangar of the ship, he, he smacks the ground, and that's the anti-life equation. And then he brings out the mother box. So I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think he was looking for it prior to him getting there. But he, he knew it was there when he left. The thing is, uh, what I think is he was so horribly injured that he just forgot. But, uh, yeah, that Mikey, I don't know. That's the way it looks to a lot of viewers. That means the filmmaker failed in that one instant. And I would have liked to have seen a hell of a lot more dark side. I thought, it was, I thought Ray Porter's dark side was the shit. Absolutely the shit. I like the movie, Mikey. I don't care that he forgot. I mean, like, I, I, I was only half joking when I said, you go to 100,000 planets, there's going to be clerical errors. Even with Darkseid, even on Apocalypse, there are clerical errors. Now, people die for that, especially if you lost the planet that has the anti-life equation, the one thing you were looking for. No, but that was still early on Darkseid. That wasn't, like, fully formed like the what we saw later. Those are thousand year, years apart, and it's a thousand. It's thousands of years, right? So people can forget. Mikey Gussler for ten more dollars. Ryan Cannell put out a video that the Snyder Cut had more views than Falcon and Winter Soldier. I think we will get more of the Snyderverse. AT and T is in charge, and they were the ones to release the Snyder Cut. Um, the only way the Snyderverse survives is if Ann Sarnoff, Walter Hamada, are gone. They have to be gone. Ann Sarnoff. Uh, you want to know where there's civil war guys? It's not, it's not Disney. It's Warner brothers. There's a civil war in Warner brothers. AT&T runs the show and they bought out Warner brothers and they can't just fire everybody. And I mean, that's just, that's not possible, but it's a very real realistic scenario that they can buy this company and not be happy with it. And over time, systematically put in their people. And I believe that's what's going to happen. And that's why Ann Sarnoff is trying to build on the momentum of the Snyder cut to push her shit. Does that sound familiar? Kind of sounds exactly why, like what uh, Kathleen Kennedy did after the Mandalorian, except it's all her shit. Uh, no, the, the Snyder cut was an AT&T thing. I do believe it was a fan movement. It wasn't, listen, the fan movement wasn't perfect. There was a lot of drama. Yeah. There there's assholes in every fandom, but what the access media does is they pick out the one asshole and, and say, we're all that asshole. You know, it's that uh, guilt by association bullshit. You know, I, I have no control what another channel does. Uh, I have no control what, what anybody else does. So I, I don't have to answer for another channel's actions. I, I just, I, I don't, um, that's, that's their thing. So, and I, I say the same about fandom. I don't paint you all with that brush. Uh, Mikey Gussler for $10. It's been surprising the amount of positivity, positivity, positivity the Snyder cut has gained from people who didn't like the previous two films like red letter media who said it's pretty good including the 96 percent on rotten tomato yeah because it's a better film mikey it's a better film and i think time has been very kind to the Snyderverse, and i think more people 
Honestly, I'll tell you why I'm more accepting of it, Mikey, because it's not supposed to be the established canon for DC film wise. This is a distinctly different thing because I don't like starting Batman at the end or the beginning. I would love what we haven't had is can we get a middle Batman? You know, we got Batman begins. We got Batman at the end. Can we get Batman like 10 years in? with Robin, Dick Grayson, Robin, and, uh, you know, Alfred, a fully functional bat cave, everybody, a full bat family. That's what I would love to see. Uh, Batman, the animated series in live action. That's what I'd like to see. Uh, but no, it's, it's Mikey. I wasn't kidding. It's the best superhero mo movie. I believe I'm going to see this year and I'll own it on 4k. I own the other movies. I do. And I don't think they're great. I don't. But I own them because I like superhero movies. No shame to my game, man. Uh, but, but Mikey, I'm glad it's everything you wanted it to be, dude. I am. Uh, and thanks for the super chats, brother. And I hope we get more of the Snyderverse because it will be better than the DC Jar Jar U. I promise you. I think even, even Snyder critics can admit that. Ta-Nehisi Coates Superman. Oh, it's going to be great for content. Uh, Shogun Gaming. For 20 Danish Krona. Remember, Gary, BBC is next week, not yesterday. I know, right? I was so sleep-deprived. Absolutely sleep-deprived. Yeah, BBC is next week. Uh, Clay, and thank you. Clay Johnson for $5. I am going to see Godzilla versus Kong in IMAX next week, but will not do the same for Black Widow. I have more respect for Warner Brothers than for Disney. Uh, yeah, I still do. I think they're dumb, though. I think they're effing dumb. Uh no, Disney is despicable company. Warner Brothers is just dumb. But they did some despicable things too, which we'll get into. SJ Almighty, thank you for the $1.49 super sticker. Uh, I appreciate it. Get, uh, Christian Del Orm for $5. Five Canadian pesos because I like you and you're a good man. Cheers, buddy. Wow, thank you, Christian. I appreciate it. Right back at you. Uh, and reminder, these are from yesterday, uh, the stream that farted out. Uh, Kit Kat for $5. The immediate... Uh, the immediately previous stream has gone private. Whatever did you guys say? Oh, we, I didn't say anything. That was, I didn't say anything. What happened was my internet was farting out. And when I started the stream, it kicked in the delay. So there's a delay on YouTube of, a, of, I think a minute, maybe a minute. So before you go live, the stream is connected and it's live but you guys don't see it until I hit public. When I hit public, it's supposed to refresh and start with that delay of one minute. What it did was it just started. So it showed you saw 20 minutes before I hit the live button. And I'm, I was sitting there setting stuff up and then trying to restart my internet. It was weird. Uh, Joe Hood for $5. Four years sober today. Congratulations. <laughs> I want to thank you for all your hard work and great content. It keeps me sane. Why, thank you, as uh, I always say, you keep me sane, Joe. You keep me sane. Yeah, and AA meetings. Uh, there's Stargate, and thank you, Joe. I appreciate it. Stargate 404 for $5. You see the CBR article where they were calling Flash creepy and toxic in the Snyder Cup because he brushed Iris's hair for too long and took a hot dog? Yes, you showed me that on the member stream last night, and we are going to go over that article. And this is going to be... It, I, this will be my prime example of fake geek media, fake geek media, F G M. Um, George Peter Gatiss, a uh, Gatsis, sorry, Gatsis for $5. Joe King is alive, is live on Indiegogo, two books, superhero, sci-fi adventure, 240 pages total, full color. Uh, DM me on Twitter to get a free spaceship with books. So that's George Peter Gatiss, and it is called Joe King. Joe King. Thanks, brother. $4.99 from Nick Nero. Delivering boxes is the worst uh, delivering boxes in the worst city imaginable. Thank God a live stream now for some sound, and we're golden. Yeah, sorry to disappoint yesterday, buddy. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Um, Kit Kat for $1.99 says, uh, I'm worth the wait. Why, thank you. Uh, thank you. Mrs. Nerdrotic agrees. Foul Ball Productions. What's up, Matt? 
Go check out Foul Ball Productions. That's a good channel. Uh, it broke uh, one of the Bill Burr stories. Great guy. Talked to him last night for like three hours. Uh, excellent video on the Snyder Cut yesterday. Thank you. Thank you. I freaking worked hard on that one. And YouTube took an hour to, to monetize it. That's why it released so late. I said, hey, the, the video is going to drop in a second, right? Or I said about an hour on Twitter. And then I watched it again. And towards the end, I, I, I made a horrific cut. And, and I was cutting it until 4 in the morning. And I just didn't see it. So thank God you didn't see it. I fixed it. You can see it at the end. The, the music breaks a little bit. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I uh, re-uploaded it and then like YouTube has this new demonet monetizing thing and it takes forever. It takes forever. Uh, Kit Kat for $1.99. Thanks for the super sticker. It says coming soon, coming soon. Uh, then we got uh, Adrian Barrera for $2. Hey Gary, you're live. Yeah, I figured that out, but thank you. <laughs> Yeti cast for $2. This is absolutely the best community on YouTube. Period. End of story. We have the best chats in our live streams. Uh, we have the best people. And yes, the, the corporations are scared. They are very scared that we are going to ruin their movies. Uh, how do I know this? We had a corporation admit it. Admit it. The biggest takeaway. There's two major takeaways from Geeks and Gamers, Zack Snyder. Number one. It's always about the fans. It begins and ends with the fans. If you do not respect the fans, you're done. You're done. I'd, nobody cares about anything after that. You come out and slap people in the face, you're done. Uh, number two is the corporations are aware of us and they're worried about us. Remember, this is public now. The first call that Zack Snyder got about Geeks and Gamers was from Warner Brothers. That's called being effective. And the reason Geeks and Gamers is effective, the reason my channel is effective, is because of you. It's not because of me. It's not because of Jeremy. It's because of you. Uh, MTH for $5. Hey, Gary, will there be an Exozone tonight? No. Uh, also, have you ever played the original Mass Effect trilogy? I have not. It's a sci-fi universe that rivals Trek and Wars. I've heard. I've heard. My biggest fear with gaming is I'm a bit obsessive compulsive and I'll start playing and like, I'll forget the channel and everything. I'll give you an example. I started playing city of heroes and I got so obsessed with that game. I was like playing it in the store on a work day with customers in there. And then I, you know, when the customer needs something, I help them, but I'd be all like that. You can't do that at work, uh, even at my own job. So I, yeah, I tend to like, get into the game like way too much. So I do game once in a while, but it's like, uh, it was Diablo city of heroes, red dead redemption, ultimate Marvel. And, uh, once I can get out of the room in Witcher three, uh, that's coming out this weekend, by the way, my Witcher three gameplay is going to come out this weekend. Uh, Fernando Pena. Thank you for the six ninety nine. I appreciate it. And I think we are all caught up now. So let's go to that article. The real oh wow, Lady Green, Lady Green Master, what are you doing? What are you doing, Lass? Hang on, I gotta scroll down to that. Scrolling down, and remember, I'm on I'm on a hard time limit today, but we still got a lot of time. I've got uh, yeah, got an hour. Lady Grandmaster says WB put AT&T in a vice by investing in 500 million uh, in JJ. WB saw their losing power, their losing power to fans and did whatever they could to derail it since it's not what Sarnoff wants. AT&T is going to have to decide between an already signed check and getting signed checks from the fans. This is why you don't jump into deals, Hollywood. Hopefully somebody from Warner Brothers is watching. Patience. Patience is the key to business. And I know you guys are running. I only ran a comic store that generated like what? A million dollars a year in total sales. I didn't take that home. And, uh, um, and you generate billions. I understand that you're much smarter, better and everything than me, but um, you signed Jar Jar Abrams to half a billion dollars. That is the second stupidest thing in the history of Hollywood. 
the first was not casting, Han, not putting Han, Luke, and Leia into a movie together when you signed them. That is the single dumbest thing in the history of Hollywood. So Kathleen, Ann Sarnoff has given Kathleen Kennedy a run for her money. Jar Jar Abrams will sink your universe. It will divide fandoms. Show me, show me where there is a huge group of rabid J. Jar Jar Abrams fans. Where? Doesn't exist. When I was a youngster, Steven Spielberg was a demigod. Like, kids went to go see The Color Purple because it was directed by Steven Spielberg, our hero, our personal hero. Uh, because for a time before he um, sold out to Hollywood, he was a bit of a man of the people. And people forget this so much, man. Like, when you're a man of the people, Zack Snyder, when you're a man of the people, um, that's that's ultimately what you want to be. And we all we see him sell out more than often. You know, Joe Rogan, man of the people. Did he sell out? I think time will tell. It doesn't seem like he has, but time will tell. But Steven Spielberg sold out. Howard Stern sold out. Nobody's, you know, when a man of the people or a woman of the people becomes a big star and then they start, they just move away from what their core audience was and then they peter out and they wonder why. It's because you were already in a better place, right? We, being accepted by the people is so much better than being accepted by Hollywood. Hollywood just makes shit for each other and that's why it fails so much. That's where the desk. That's where the disconnect lies. Fandom is just a necessary evil for the royalty of America. Mikey Gussler for $5. Hey, Nerdrotic, did you see that BVS Ultimate Edition 4K remaster is sold out everywhere? I couldn't find it on Amazon or Best Buy. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll buy it secondhand from... Uh, I wasn't going to buy it firsthand anyway. I'll buy it secondhand on eBay. I, I like the steel books. I'm a big fan of the steel books. Uh, but uh, now I'm not surprised. I mean, it, it, this thing's a hit. Now, I heard, well, I, well, no, I saw a headline from a clownfish video that said Wonder Woman um, had more views. And I think that's possible because it was during Christmas and the previous Wonder Woman was a massive hit. Uh, but I think over time, oh, I know over time, Justice League will have more views than Wonder Woman 84. Wonder Woman 84 was garbage. And that's what Ann Sarnoff wants. That's part of what Lady Greymaster was talking about. That's her plan. Wonder Woman 84 is DC Jar Jar U. Birds of Prey is DC Jar Jar U. I promise you, the minute he signed on the dotted line, I have to go back and look at the timing of this, but this was after Zack Snyder left. He became the head of DC. But what Jar Jar does, because he's fucking, because he's smart, I'll give him this, he's smart, is he never states that he's the head. He never states that he's making these plans. He lets other people do that for him. And then if something's successful later, you'll see his head pop up. You'll see him pop up going, yes, I was part of it. But if it's not, he's nowhere to be found. He's a fucking smart dude. He's a smart dude. But I'm on to you, JJ, Jar Jar. I'm on to you. Pierce Brosnan is Dr. Fate for Black Adam. Thoughts? Super Nate for $5. Um, I think it's I think that's great. I love I love Pierce Brosnan. Brosnan. Uh, but it's not gonna be Black Adam, right? Isn't it supposed to be Shazadam? Shiz Black. <laughs> they should call him Shiz Black. Uh, Shazadam. Is that what they're going to call it? According to Bleeding Cool. Uh, it sounds interesting, but 
who's directing it, who's producing it, because if there's bad robot involved, eh. I mean, he's a little old, but I mean, they could pull that off now. Like age with an actor doesn't really matter. I love Dr. Fate as a character. I wish there was a one six scale Dr. Fate. Super Nate. I do. Uh, it might be good. Listening with my one day old daughter, our first. Oh, Jack Bauer for two dollars. I'll I'll try to keep it down. I don't wanna I don't wanna wake her up. She's sleeping. But uh, congratulations, one year old. They grow up so fast, dude. They do. I remember when my big, smelly teenager was like this little burrito that uh, we watched our first football. It was like he was like two days old, and I was watching the Chargers play the Patriots where they beat Tom Brady, and uh, it was just me and my little uh, burrito. SJ Almighty, thank you for the super sticker. I appreciate it. For 10 pounds, 10 pounds. Peter DeRosa for $9.99. Hail Gary picked up a copy of Berserker, and it's awesome. Can't wait for the Netflix series. Going to get it signed by Ron Garney. Ron Garney's great. Who lives near me and frequents my local uh, comic shop. Have you read the comic yet? No. Um, my copy was, um, I, I bought. I, I'm pretty sure it was sent to San Francisco. I bought something. It was so long ago. But it was sent to San Francisco. I also bought, uh, did Todd McFarlane's Spawn toy ever come out? I bought that too. Um, so no, I haven't read it, read it, but I'll get a copy and I can't wait for the Netflix series. Hopefully it's not woke. And Ron Garney is awesome. I hate to say this, because I really do, but one of the best Captain America runs ever was prior to... Uh, 9-11 it was in the early 2000s and they were trying to do a soft reboot on everybody and mark wade and ron garney did a captain america run that lasted 50 issues that was it was good but it was before we all find found out what kind of a person mark wade is which is vile vile mikey gussler for five dollars wb would be insane not to continue to Snyderverse. I completely agree, especially with cavill and affleck people want more so give us more and i'll give you my money uh, Mikey, that is essentially what every single channel that I am semi associated with, with absolute pride have been saying for four years. Could you just dial it back a little bit, bring things into the middle, maybe not be filled with intersectional feminism, which nobody likes. Nobody likes this. Roger H., thank you for the thumbs up, super sticker. I appreciate it. All right, I'm gonna we're gonna read an article real quick. Um, it's uh it's dumb. It's fracking dumb. Thank you, I think, to Stargate 404 for pointing this out. And, uh, God, I got to find a way to make it quick. Um, it'll probably be ready by next week. I was hoping to be ready by tomorrow, but, uh, this will lead into a bit of an announcement. Okay. Zack Snyder's justice league. Why that creepy flash scene deserved to be cut. I don't like Ezra Miller as flash. I think he's a terrible flash. I don't like the costume. But I, I was fine with him in the movie. I was. That being said, didn't take me out of the movie. I was okay. I would like to see a better Flash. It was great to see the Speed Force, and then you had this guy running like a spaz. But that scene with Iris was a good fucking scene. That's a superhero scene. That is a that's a Spider-Man upside-down kiss scene. That is, I still get Goosebumps to this day when Superman saves Lois Lane. You've got me. Who's got you? Such a fucking. Uh, uh, yeah, I like uh, to see my superheroes rescuing people. I think that's important. You know, yeah, I like to see a good fight, too. I do. Um, 
That being, let's just hear this insanity. Zack Snyder's Justice League proves that one scene focused on Ezra Miller's Flash should be should have remained on the cutting room floor, and this is according to Ronaldo Matadine. It was published three days ago on, and I shit you not, Comic Book Resources CBR, CBR.com, which is a site I used to go to all the time to get information. And then it got infiltrated by activists, fake activists, fake geeks. People who, whose mo- sole motivation was to get into geekdom was to clout chase, was to gain notoriety, was to be a stepping stone to something else. That's what most of this is. That's why people saw through the things like Collider, which were, sure, you do enough research, you read enough Wikipedia, you can sound like you know what you're talking about, but you're actually just a comedian looking for a gig and you want to be an actor someday. Um, Olivia Munn. Olivia Munn was fake geek girl, patient zero. And what the fuck happened to her face? Did somebody hit her? I hope not. That's terrible. Um, I was right behind Olivia Munn. As a matter of fact, I was talking to, and I don't know his name. Oh, my God. Uh, to the director of Fanboys. They did a screening of his of his movie, and he snuck in and sat right next to me, and then we just started talking. He was a nice guy. Um, and what's so damn funny is, you know, at the end, they go, what if it sucks? Like, I, I know everybody said that, but I literally said that to my friend Doug. If Doug's in here, Doug, you can verify. We sat down at at uh, uh, the official Dougie J. We sat down at the Phantom Menace, and I looked over. I'm like, what if it sucks? Because I it never crossed my mind that it would suck. Um, so I digress. Fake fucking geeks. Fake geeks. Olivia Munn. I was right behind Olivia Munn. I got lost track of thought there. And she was in her Slave Leia cosplay. And me and the director were just walking very slowly, being toxic as fuck. <laughs> no shame to my game. Uh, one of the biggest edits uh, the theatrical cut of Justice League made was omitting uh, Kearsay Clemens, Iris West. By the way, Kearsay Clemens, the Iris West girl, she's going to be playing, I believe it's her, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's her, playing a Targaryen in uh, House of the Dragon. Targaryen, a Valerian. I'll do a video on that someday. Fans were excited to see her cameo as it was undoubtedly a setup for Ezra Miller's Flash movie, the one that's been in production for six years. But it was demanded, uh, but it deemed it was deemed expendable in the two hour runtime. However, after being inserted into Zack Snyder's Justice League, a creepy scene with Iris West plays out, making it clear that axing it was the right choice okay do you i wonder if he brings up barry's powers the flash for instance the flash if the flash raced quicksilver from marvel he would destroy him the flash is the fastest man on earth when the Flash runs, depending on what era you're reading, uh, he's not necessarily here or there anymore. Um, he's in- immensely powerful. He can do some insane things, including take his time in a moment like this. So you see, you see right now how much things have changed since then. Remember... This was preceded by her. She looked at him and smiled. And believe me, it was a very distinct communicative smile of, I think you're pretty hot. And he returned the look. Then she looked again while she was driving. So those are two signs. So she's about to die. And Barry goes through the front window. It's rad. And the light hits her, and he is enamored by the beauty. That's the way I took it. I don't think he wanted to uh, uh, 
you know, get down, but like he's enamored by the, he's like, whoa, you know, kind of like the first time I saw M- Mrs. Nerdrotic, you know, it was like, whoa. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. That's how we, um, continue as a species, right? Uh, most women don't mind that. Uh, and that's all it was and why he grabbed a hot dog. Uh, I thought that was great. Red letter media pointed it out. I thought it was great for the dogs. He was thinking about his job too, because he has time to think about that stuff because he's the fastest man alive. They were displaying his powers and with the song. And this is what, you know, Zack Snyder does slow-mo too much, but this is the kind of shit he does. This is like his, this is his wheelhouse, a moment like that. And that's why he's really good at uh, adapting Frank Miller in 300 because Frank, Frank Miller's comics play out like that. Uh, so I thought it was an excellent scene. Uh, adding some depth to Barry isn't the problem. Snyder spends most of his movie making Flash more likable, but in the scene, he comes off as toxic and it really... Okay, for one, this is Ezra Miller we're talking about here. Let's be real. I didn't sense a lot of chemistry between the two, let's just say. Running around in his man prees. Let's be, come on. We can be honest with each other. We can. Um, I'm sure he like, I'm sure he likes her as a friend. I'm sure he likes her as a friend. Um, but uh I don't think Ezra plays for that team. I could be wrong. He comes off as toxic. Does Ezra Miller come off as toxic? Remember his interviews where he was trying to force Gal Gadot to say down with the patriarchy? I do. And it really doesn't paint the speedster in the most altruistic light The moment focused on him applying for a job at a doggy daycare, locking eyes with Iris West. West. She locks eyes with him, too. Uh, When she leaves, it's melodramatic and romantic, similar to what's been done on the CW. But, but in the beginning, to go... uh, But it begins to go wrong when she drives off. The scene sets in slow motion with her not taking her eyes off Barry, which is strange because her car's in motion at the light. She's T-boned by a truck whose driver was trying to find a burger that fell on the floor, blah, blah, blah. uh, In what's a ridiculous set of unfortunate events. It's a superhero film. Oh, God, are you going to describe everything that happens in the movie? This goes on, okay. Uh, As Iris' car flips, she's tossed. Barry speeds through the glass, but rather than grab her in midair immediately, he grabs the hot dog from a cart that was thrown in the air and uses the speed force for some stalking. That's right, he uses the speed force for stalking. Down with the patriarchy. He fawns over Iris for a long moment even brushing her hair out of her face. This goes uh, on for way too long, and in the end, it is a total invasion of her privacy. Snyder tries to lighten the mood by setting it up uh, to Rose Betts' piano cover of Song uh, to the Siren. By the way, I think that's an acceptable mumbly cover. I still want that trend ended forever. But even that can't make That can't mask the toxicity. We need to put a mask on the toxicity. Uh, Barry eventually sets her down before running away as her vehicle explodes. But while the intention is to show him saving a damsel in distress, it really depicts him as a creep. Of course, Snyder did cut the horrific shot of Barry uh, falling into Wonder Woman's chest when they suit up later on, but it doesn't help that Barry goes on to ogle Diana and ask Cyborg if he thinks 
she dates younger guys. That's a funny line. It's to set up that everyone's a younger guy. It's to set up that she's 5,000 years old. Fucking dumbass. So this guy doesn't get laid. And I think that's a big problem. I think that's a big problem. I think there's a lot of pent-up frustration with this guy. And listen, you know what? We all been there. We all been there, man. Believe me, we've all been there. And, you know, actually talking to women, because uh, women like to be talked to, uh, not talked at. You can talk with them. Um, and it depends on the woman. I think uh, there's some out there that still want to date. Uh, I guess the good news from this is uh, someone like this won't procreate and our civilization won't go on anyway. Uh, or at least, the, you know, the people who want to procreate. Well, uh, when talking, uh, uh, when taking all of this into consideration, wow, Barry comes out looking like someone who doesn't respect boundaries. Had the car scene remained cut, one might have given Barry the benefit of the doubt as the uh, as an overzealous Wonder Woman fanboy with a crush. But ultimately, rather than giving off the impression of a genuine, caring hero, the car sequence makes Barry out to be someone that needs to learn a thing or two about respect. This person never goes outside. And that's where he ends it. CBR published this. This got by an editor. Here's other articles by Ronaldo. He put fierce in a headline. You know, times are changing. Ladies can do stuff now. Batman White Knight gives Harley Quinn a fierce new costume. Uh, anybody who uses the word fierce in a sentence, it, it, it's only Hollywood. It's only the access media. They use the word empowerment regularly. Oh, here's here's another one of his articles. Zack Snyder's Justice League is proof that the Snyderverse shouldn't be restored. Despite pleasing the fans who campaigned for its release, Zack Snyder's Justice League is proof this... I mean, you just said that. Oh, fuck off. I don't even want to read this. Fuck you, dude. Well, it got... You know what? If, uh, if Warner Brothers restor restored the Snyderverse uh, for streaming, for streaming... I think it would be very successful. I think it would be extremely successful. But they're not going to do that. And man, the media just hates it. Then we got Ann Snoroff. Warner Media... Warner Media CEO stands up to toxic Snyder Cut fans. That behavior is reprehensible. Well... I'm not going to defend her because there was a much better way to answer this question. Uh, it was a leading question. It was a leading question. It was a, so there's all this toxic fandom out there and that toxic fandom was involved in uh, the Snyder cut. Do you, do you take responsibility for that or something like that? And she's like, there's no time for it. There's a uh, Henry Cavill's answer was the best answer ever on that. We'll get back to that in just a second. Hang on. Get to you guys. Boo, boo, boo. There we go. A jury nitpicker for four ninety nine. Folks asked me what I wanted to do with my life. I showed them a pic of you and your bedroom and said, "That's my goal." All those plastic pals. LOL. Yes, yes. I love my plastic pals. And yes, I got that from Hitchhiker. Uh, the serious cybernetics corporations. Robots are your plastic pals who are fun to be with. With genuine people personalities. 
Uh, Commander Ed Straker of Shadow for $5. Garrett, thank you for last night's member stream. It was great and the first stream I could actively participate in over two months. Sidebar was great. Thank you. I appreciate it. And it was great talking to you, man. It was great. Thank you, Dreary Nitpicker. Um, yeah, these action figures. The, the key is, is to open the packaging, brother. Open the packaging. Uh, there's some stuff I don't have open, but, uh, you know, when you get too many, it's just storage becomes an issue. So it's easier. And I, yeah, I used to have more. I used to have a lot more. So I had this big chest right at my front door of the, the comic shop. And on it, it said, you know, comic outposts, loose figures. So I had a whole brand. As a matter of fact, I still have one hanging up on the wall. Uh, maybe I'll show you the label, but it was a loose figure. It was the loose figure section, and it was five bucks. Five bucks, um, and I think it was six for $20. So basically, you get one free. If, uh, if you got, what, four, you get one free. Uh, yeah, and, and they sold like crazy. They sold like crazy. So I would go to Swap Meets, I would go to I would go on eBay and I'd buy loose action figure collections. I didn't care if they didn't have the weapons or anything. And I buy bought them in bulk. And then I met somebody who was a pipeline to loose action figures. And I just bought them from him and I filled that chest every couple months and it would be cleared out. And the they had, that's what the kids went straight for. So dad would come in or mom with their two kids, boys or girls, they went straight for that thing every time. And uh, I let them, I, I set up a little area where they could, you know, play with the action figures that they wanted to, a little kid, and then it turned into a kid section, uh, which was the first, and I think only kid section at the time in San Francisco, because all the other comic shops need to be fucking edgy, you know, uh, you know, artsy fartsy comic shops, which is fine, but I wanted to just be a superhero comic shop, which was way, you know, it's not very San Francisco, but apparently it was. Because it was pretty popular. Uh, Chronix for ten dollars. Been watching through Stargate, uh, Stargate SG One again after it was brought up on one of your live streams. Forgot how good of a military sci-fi show it was. Glad it isn't being remade today. Yes, be happy. Nothing is being remade today. And I'll get to that show next after Babylon Five. I will. Captain Scarlet for four ninety nine. Hi Gary. I would have loved to see a Shang-Chi Luke Cage 70s-esque film. The Woking Dead have stopped uh, many films before they even get started. Yes, Shang-Chi. I think you should introduce Shang-Chi in, in, in Daredevil with Luke Cage. I think that would be fun. I, I, Shank, there's no way on God's green earth Shang Chi can hold up his own film unless they like make it a very small film. Like we give it a fifty thousand or a fifty million dollar budget. I guess it could work. And if you make it, if they made it a rated R, hard R action film, absolutely it could work. Just uh, as a standalone. But let's let's be real. We know what that's being made for. Gossip mime for five dollars. And listen, I read the comic. I own them. I own them. Uh, just saw Sunday's Inquisition. I actually disagree with you and Doomcock on uh, F and Falcon and Winter Soldier. I thought it was great and a big step up from WandaVision. I felt like I was watching Daredevil again. It was that good. Smooth Jam California. I could not disagree more. Absolutely could not disagree more. It was nowhere near as good as Daredevil. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate you, but it was boring. It was absolutely boring. Uh, the action scene in the beginning was good. I thought we were off to the races with that. Uh, I don't care about the loan and his sister. I, I, I was fine with them, you know, giving this shield to the Smithsonian. I wasn't fine with the statement. I'm paraphrasing here. We need, we need heroes for these times. Cap was the greatest, but now we need heroes for these times. And it makes sense, but it really looks like it's going to be Marvel's The Boys. And I mean The Boys Season 2, not The Boys Season 1. 
And I'm not a fan of the boys season two at all. Uh, because it was ooh, pushing a, a narrative that Hollywood's been pushing for years. And it directly relates to how we have been tr treated as fans for the last two years. This narrative is being pushed absolutely everywhere, including our entertainment that we love. And it's being pushed in that show. But the main reason I didn't like it is it was boring. I watched it twice and I struggled to get through it. Uh, but thank you for the super chat and your opinion is absolutely valued here and hopefully it gets better. Commodore Stargazer for five dollars. If you didn't like Battle Beyond the Stars, you are control <laughs> control left. Uh, I loved Battle Beyond the Stars. I love all of those all the eighties movies. I have a, a fondness for. I don't know. Uh, yeah, when I went and watched movies as a kid, even the bad ones, I found a way to enjoy them. Even Ator. Yes, I saw Ator in the theaters. Uh, Destiny Captain for four ninety nine. Uh, Gary, have you gotten any closer to watching Stargate? Love to hear your thoughts. Like the old days. Uh, not nowhere near close to watching it yet. I got to get through Babylon five. I got to get through five seasons of Babylon five. So I'll be realistic. It's probably next year. Uh, as and I are going to be reviewing, well, it might be faster as and I are going to be reviewing Babylon five, uh, on the BB and C, the BB and C, which will be next Tuesday. So keep an eye for it. And I like what I see so far. Uh, Payuma man for $5. These people are the true undead. They have no lives. It's why they do what they do with most of their time. The, 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 it's a life without meaning. Cancel culture is a life without meaning. And they're trying to fill this gigantic hole in their soul. And they can't. Uh, it's a lot like drug addiction. So they are so bored. And priv you want to talk about privileged. You want to fucking talk about privilege. Who's got the time to sit around and worry what a movie star said about something? especially when it comes to politics and more often than that, try to cancel that person. When there's people on this planet, the vast majority of the world doesn't have reliable electricity. Doesn't have running water. Uh, there's a large portion of this planet that doesn't know where their next meal is coming from. We're an ungrateful nation. We're an absolutely ungrateful nation. And we had our media, our big tech, and a lot of our government dividing us for the last four years. And it's going to take a lot of work to bring us together. And we had a lot of people, including the cancel culture, they think they're, they're superheroes. They wake up in the morning and they think they're superheroes. Um, there's a lot of lost, lost people out there that need a lot of help. And it's not going to be fixed overnight. The damage done from the last four years is not going to be fixed overnight. I, I've said it before, I'll say it again. 2019, we were making progress. I think Hollywood was seeing the signs of their failure and they were turning things around. And then everything was reset last year in more ways than one. And we have a long fight ahead of us if we want our entertainment back. If we, But it's, it's bigger than our entertainment. We're not just talking about Batman here, folks. We're not. Jane Theory, thank you for the thumbs up. Hi, Jane. Go check out Jane Theory's channel. A word gift... Construction, uh, con a word gift, constructive criticism, courteously conferred, conveys caution, complaints, compliments, and cute comments, calmly, coolly, and is completely classy. By Sparks, fifteen twenty four. That was lovely. That was lovely. Hang on. What? Were you saying something? Look, I don't speak Spanish. Uh, Stephen, thank you for the ten dollars. Stephen T for five pounds. Hail Gary. Thanks. I love the nooner. You are the dude. Peace. You're the dude, Stephen. Peace to you. Peace to you. Hail Gary. Heard a rumor 
Uh, rumor there was a new Stargate series in the works. Hopefully this is true, but also they stick to what Stargate is and don't destroy another beloved series. Please don't make it woke. Uh, randomized for nine uh, or ten British pounds, essentially. It will be woke. Pray they don't remake it. Just pray. Plan our aspect for five dollars. We may lose some franchises, but we'll win the war eventually. Yes, because we buy everything. They 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 can run whatever effing narrative they want and they can try to waste their time to silence us. You know how you want, you know how you shut me up. You know how you shut up as, and everyone else stop filling your shit with identity politics. Nobody's asking you to, to fill it with the other side. We've never said that. That's bottom line. Uh, show men and women working together. I mean, they can't even show that right now. And that's what we need. That's why Superman and Lois, from what I've seen, is good. Because it's showing family units working together, men and women working together, women and men working together. We need to see a lot more of that. And we need to see it for a long time. 200 Watt Studio for $2. Hail, Gary, and the Nerdrotic Chat. Hail to the chat. I'm pointing to you right there because that's where you are. You're right over there to me. 200 Watt Studio. What's up, brother? Uh, for $75. Oh, my God. Hang on. $75. Gonzalo Bergia, uh, Bergia, Bergia for $75 Uruguayan dollars. We are on the all-new, all-different, all-lame era of the MCU. We're here. It's arrived. It's been here for a while. And Black Widow will be the next entry, so delay the MCU all you effing want. Uh, Black Widow is going to be a woke mess. If it's not, I will sit corrected and say, you know what? I was wrong. I thought it was going to be a woke mess. It's actually pretty good. See, it's not hard. I can do it. It's no problem. I've been wrong about shit this morning. Uh, Codfish Killer for five dollars will not pay to see Black Widow. I wonder what other movies are playing at the same time. Pay for what? Uh, that watch but uh pay for that watch yeah i would just figure it out personally i am on the hunt to see the lord of the rings and imax and i think vegas might be the place to do that okay we got uh raging patty for hang on let me get up to raging patty here one moment please There we go. Raging Patty for 100 pounds. Oh my God. Uh, Gary, check out a German show called Dark on Netflix. Oh, the best thing that I have seen since The Expanse. I think it's right up your street. No wokeness in the first two seasons that I have watched. Dude, Dark is awesome. I've seen Dark. You know what? Do you guys want a review on Dark? I haven't done one. I mean, it'll have to... The mythical Picard review, unfortunately, is I can't get it out by the vacation. It's just there's I ran out of time. Uh, I, I want to put my finishing touches on that, and then I'll review Dark. I'll, I'll put Dark ahead of The Witcher, because I haven't done... I'm doing some backlog reviews. And um, while Picard is going to be finished someday, it's actually... I've cracked the code on it, but it's just not going to be out because uh, I've got a, I've got things to do. I've got things to do. Um, but yeah, I'll review it. I'll watch it again. It's fucking amazing. Austin Dyer for $5. I don't follow a lot of source material you cover, but I always love your commentary on it. Uh, in the war against the outrage mob, you have my sword. Hail! Hail, Austin. Hey, it's okay because a lot of it is shit. Uh, I cover it so you don't have to. But if something's really good, I will tell you. I will I will recommend it. I won't tell you. I'll recommend it. Like Dark. I can recommend Dark. It's not for everybody. Uh, kind of think, look at it as a more adult Stranger Things that's more about the story and not about nostalgia. All right? It's not gimmicky. Matt Guy for $2. Has anyone noticed 
how BVS Lex and Jeremy could be twins. Ooh, we're going to have to put them face to face. We're going to have to put them face to face. I'll look into that. That's a possibility. By the way, George, if you're out there, I'm going to George, George Moilo, George Moilo. Just wanted to say that he sent me a message how to pronounce his name and I did hear it. So I just wanted to acknowledge that Jorge. Uh, oh boy. Now I got another hard last name here. John Pap Papa Sergio for $5. How dare these heroes save people without their consent? I know it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. Uh, Jay Braylon. I got to keep an eye on the clock. Uh, Van Zant for four ninety nine. Gary, are you going to watch Amazon Prime Video Image Comics Animation Adaptation of Invincible? Yes, I am, and I will be reviewing it. Absolutely. Okay, here are the donations. We've got some donations from uh, from Big Worm. Uh, hail Gary. Hail again, chat. F for a little fun. Can you watch the under? The under force trailer quickly. I'd love to experience that with you. Live long and prosper. Prosper. I I uh Thunder Force, the Thunder Force trailer. Um, I can't because I don't know if I'll get copyrights. Maybe we'll do it on tomorrow tomorrow. Maybe we'll do it tomorrow because I'm very limited on time. As a matter of fact, I gotta I gotta crack open my hot toys because I promised to do that. Uh, let me read a donation here. Uh, Sam and Bucky Power Hour wasn't too impressive after the first episode. The only Marvel product I'm sort of interested in is Shang-Chi. I'm hoping it has some aspect of the classic Kung Fu films. I do too. I grew up with, but knowing Marvel, it'll probably won't. And, and uh, yeah, thank you for the $5. Uh, criminally gentle. Uh, I hope I'm wrong about everything I say. I, I am when, when I'm critical of that stuff. I want it all to be good. I want it all to be good uh, because I'm a fan. I'm a fan. So uh, if it wasn't going to be Affleck in the end, how would you feel about John Hamm during his prime as Bruce Wayne and Bre uh, I, I would as Bruce Wayne and Batman with the Batman, the animated series come to life vibe, Deanie and Tim uh, on board. I'd, I'd watch it in a second. Gray ghost. Watch it in a second. Sith Cake for $5. Uh, GF and I, girlfriend and I, are mucho sad we don't get more Snyder, Batfleck, and especially Cavill's Superman. I am too. I think I, I, I think it's good. You know? Why is it, okay, you, just to show how equally dumb Marvel is, why isn't there a Daredevil in production like right fucking now? Right now. Daredevil season one or two of the best things Marvel has done right up there with winter soldier and guardians. So it is time. Now I have, you know, as, as has been bad for my wallet, but I also, I own, I own a bunch of hot toys that I haven't even, you know, because I'm moving. I haven't taken, I have never taken out of the box, including like this one I just got, but including a whole set of guardians that I've never taken out that I'll show. But this one, I had to have. I had to have it. Because this is currently still my favorite Marvel character. Which is Daredevil. Love that. Uh, the Frank, Frank, uh, the reason I stayed a comic fan was Frank Miller's Daredevil run. It was I couldn't believe what I was reading as a kid. They killed Elektra. Daredevil damn near killed Bullseye. Black Widow, Punisher, Kingpin. It was so good. The Hand. That's when I saw the Hand in Falcon and Winter Soldier. I'm like, what? Yeah. I don't know if you can see this because of the glare, but yeah, there it is. This thing looks bad ass. Ha! 
Hot toys are a, are a bad habit. They really are. But they're... I mean, they're recommended. For, they're, they're adult toys. They are. These are... And... Damn, this looks good. Look at how... These things are art. These things are high art. They're a good product. So let's get some plastic off them. There's a base here. I'm not going to pull it out. There, we'll just take the plastic off his head. The detail on this is un-effing believable. And... Pretty sure you can take his face off. There we go. Why isn't that coming? I'm not going to force it off. But he's got, you could take his face off and have him little, little bloody. Look at that. Look at the teeth on that. Focus, focus, damn it. That is brilliant. And of course, you've got all these. I've been waiting to open this guy. I thought I'd just do it now. There's a way to pose these. You always have to, how you pose these things, you always, I, I learned this from a action figure. Uh, one of the guys who, who designed for Hot Toys always poise, pose off to the side. So it gives you more of a, a realistic look. You bend his back a little bit. Badass. That is badass. I'll read a couple more. And then uh, thank you, Raging Patty, for the 100 pounds, by the way. Thank you so much. And, yeah, that's going to back on the walls of wonder. Not that I can, uh, I, I, I have room. I have room, kind of. It, like, stuff is on my pinball machine now, including uh, Vampirella. Vampirella, which uh, I, I, now I feel like I'm breaking some boundaries every time I pose that, that figure. Uh, Grand Wazoo, 42 for $10. Just uh, toss a coin to the bitcher. Love your channel. Yes, toss a, toss a coin to your bitcher. Uh, we got to have... Uh, Dan Vask make a song like that. We got to get him back. We got to get him back on the show. Jester of Roanoke for a dollar. I sent you a Twitter DM not too long ago that I used for a short Lord of the Rings video. It's basically a rough Photoshop MS paint job of JJ Abrams in a representation of what he is a circus ringmaster. Yes, that's exactly what it is. Uh, and I'll check it out when I get back on Twitter. Thanks, bud. Uh, Sith cake. I read that one. The best thing to come out of the Snyder cut was how Warner brothers executives wasted millions on Joss and his reshoots, uh, bogey for $4 and 420 dude. Yeah. They wasted tons of money on that. And it's, a, and that's what they wanted. That's what they wanted. Mr. Dino socks for $5. Thanks uh, thank you for pointing out how ungrateful this nation really is. I have been thinking about that for years now, and it's really refreshing to hear that someone else agrees with me. Yes, um, one of the key things that I learned in recovery uh, that helped me turn my life around because, like, shit, yeah, I was, you know, I was always me and the, the fucking world, you know, uh, the world's done me wrong. Life has not been fair to me, you know. I didn't choose to be a drug addict and have all these fucking problems. And uh, I realized, well, for one, nobody gives a fuck. Number two, you know, I, grew, I, I had to start focusing on the positive. And if you don't start doing that, you will not, I will not get comfortable in my own skin. So I started realizing, hey, I grew up in California, in Southern California, which was a, used to be a great place to grow, grow up. I had a lot of good friends. Uh, my family still loves me. You just got to start there. Uh, and focusing on the positive stuff. Yeah, sure, I point out all this shit in Hollywood, but in my personal life, 
Shit's good. Shit's good. It's real good. Uh, a little worried about my country right now, and I'm worried about it because, you know, we're going to get through this, right? Uh, I never thought we wouldn't get through the global wide pandemic, uh, despite uh, the government mismanaging the fuck out of it to this very day. And uh, I think there's a lot of people who have been locked down too long. And then, you know, uh, I, I had to watch, I had to watch my wife go through losing her business and then mourning that, and then mourning her dad who died after that, who, I mean, let's be real, would have been alive today, I believe, if it wasn't for the coof, and she would still have her business. And I ha I saw people shaming people who wanted to go back to work. And largely, these were millionaires, uh, upper, upper middle class white women, uh, shaming people for wanting to go to work. People, a lot of people who have never started a business, who've ever lost a business or had a real job or it's been a long time since they had a real job. So they've lost touch. They don't know what a 40 hour work week is and how rewarding it can be. Right. And give your life meaning and shaming like all of America because they're bored because these people are bored and they feel unfulfilled in their life. So it's, it's always somebody else's problem. No, it's always my problem. If I am feeling fucked up, it's my problem. And until everybody realizes that, and I've said it before, until you internalize, you want to internalize something, life isn't fair. But you, but I can make it better. I am capable of making it better. I start out by not worrying what people say not worrying what other people are doing, not worrying how much money someone else is making, being envious of some somebody or something is going to get you nowhere in life. Absolutely fucking nowhere in life. But if you get inspired, maybe you'll do as good as that person. Maybe you won't. Or maybe on the way, you'll find out that like, hey, I'm not such a bad person. Life isn't that bad. And all I need to be is happy. And it starts with self-acceptance. Everybody's looking for acceptance and all this. You got to, you can't, can't do that without self-acceptance. And jealousy and envy are poison for the soul. It's like resentment. Resentment is like taking poison and expecting somebody else to get sick. Uh, here we go. I got to read one of the ones that came early. Okay. We got a couple more minutes. Uh, Jack Bauer. Yeah, I think there was one. That came early. Uh, Aldred BW, four ninety nine, uh, says enjoy your content, even if I don't always agree with your takes. Also, started reading older comics, eighties and nineties. DC is great. Keep up the good work. Thank you. No, I don't expect everyone to agree with my takes all the time. That's okay. Uh, we could, you know what, we can respectfully disagree on stuff and you know what, I don't want to take you out. I don't want to end your life and your business. Uh, that is, that's insecurity. That is what we're dealing with. People who just don't know how to deal with, with adult life, with adult life. Uh, hey, Nerdrotic, did you see, uh, oh, I read that one already. I read that one already. So what it just popped up here for $20. Daniel Thirst says just listening and sorry as F I made a lockdown joke. Sorry for, uh, and best wishes to your family. Oh, it's all right. You can joke about anything. Um, you don't have to be sorry. Thank you for the $20. It's cool. I live in clownifornia. I understand that my wife, um, my wife, uh, yeah, she went through a hard time, but she's, she's, she's tough, man. She's fucking, she's smart. She's tough. She's strong. She's on to the next thing. 
uh, and she's really excited about this next thing. And uh, honestly, fuck. I mean, we would have been screwed without YouTube. I'm grateful to YouTube. I'm grateful to you guys. Uh, I sure don't like when YouTube cancels a channel because of their political views, but uh, I got to also be grateful. I think, I think within all of our organizations, uh, I don't know if there's civil wars, but there's factions. There's people who want to make money and people who are trying to create a narrative. And uh, right now, the people who are trying to create a narrative are in charge because um, they have successfully successfully painted half the country as uh, something they aren't. And we just have to fight it every day by being who we are. Being who we are. We don't have to, I, I like, I'm not, I'm tired of defending myself for this shit, but I'm going to call it out and I have to, because you know, you guys are doing it too. You guys have my back and I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. Um, and I mean, ultimately we win in the end we do, but it just could just be ready for the long haul. I know I say it over and over again, but I think there was a lot of people, uh, and, and I don't know if I'm, I, I thought change was coming around the corner too. I did, and it didn't happen. And it could be exhausting. Like last week was exhausting. It was. Uh, and I'm glad that's over with, and we're on to the important stuff, pointing out how fucking dumb Warner Brothers is. So in the end, we'll wrap it up with this. The access media hates you. The access media has always hated you. Uh, journalists have always hated you. And they have been, as I said earlier, the, the entire nerd sphere has been invaded by women's studies majors, uh, the people who went to school and have degrees that are fucking worthless and have found a way to professionally blog. They, uh, and they don't make a lot of money on these sites. And these sites are... They purely exist now to push their parent company's narrative or to gain access. That access is an interview with an actor, a early screening of a movie. Because their takes aren't very interesting or good, they have to rely on seeing the movie first so they will be the first thing you see as a reaction to that movie. But think about it. Back in the day, Siskel and Ebert were where you went for a movie review before that was Rex Reed and, and Rex Reed and Siskel and Ebert didn't need to be first. They were the people you went to cause you respected their take and you liked their take. You disagree. I disagree with them all the fucking time, but I liked them, but I liked them. So essentially when we're talking about and covering entertainment, uh, you don't have to be first. You just gotta be honest and genuine. And the, the media, Hollywood, cannot compete with that. I, I tweeted about this the other day. You and I are the meteor descending on the dinosaur legacy, on dinosaur legacy entertainment. You know, films in a theater, 20th century model. Broadcast television, 20th century model. Now we're moving into 21st century models. Uh, dragging their feet forced into it and it's not going to be enough money. So the reason they hate us is because they know they see their end with us because we're starting to entertain each other and be, we are their competition. As a matter of fact, I don't think it's competition anymore. I think the baton has been passed. The baton has been passed. And you guys keep us honest. And it's interaction. This is something they, they refuse to do. They're afraid to interact with the fandom because they don't like them. Uh, and they've written articles uh, calling you toxic. When um, fandom 101, when, it, when you want to succeed in this realm, you don't attack the fans. It's that fucking simple it's that simple but they have attacked you guys for so long they've turned off their comment sections they can't do live streams when they do go live they're not very interesting because their takes are downloaded from somebody else they don't really have any of their own 
Uh, and, and it also helps to have good taste and co- with good taste, you have to have some knowledge. Now you don't have to be an encyclopedia. Nobody expects that. There's always a bigger fish. There's already, there's plenty of people who know more about comics than I do. I don't care. I don't need to be the fucking expert on anything. I don't, I really don't. Uh, I, I love this shit. Bottom line is I love nerddom and that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. I love fucking comics. I love movies. I'm not here for anything else. And I will continue trying and I will continue reading and I will continue checking out new shows. Uh, Yeah, I'm going to be disappointed a lot. So what? Life's full of disappointment. But it's also, you know, when you find that good show, it's that much better. Or when you find, you know what? You get turned down by for, you know, for those of us uh, uh, who are super straight. (laughs) Uh, you get turned down by a lot of girls. It just happens. Uh, but when you meet the right one, you know, and that's what, that's what, when you find the right comic book, that's why we do it. You know, what would be cool? A silver surfer live action series starting from his days, uh, as Galactus Herald 200 watt studio. Fuck. Yeah. Like a non woke version. I've been dying to see that. Love the silver surfer. Uh, but but they'll make the silver. You know what? I as a matter of fact, I usually I sometimes I get rumors. Right? I get emails. I don't run with them because they sound insane, uh, or they could be from 4chan. I mean, go ahead and send them. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, I'm just never going to read anything off of 4chan. Uh, but somebody sent me a rumor that said that uh, San, uh, that that Marvel's going to be casting a transgender actor for for Silver Surfer. I could almost believe it. Uh, Darius Munchausen, thank you for the dollar forty nine hair uh, and just a super sticker. Do you watch Dragon Ball? I do not. If uh, if not, then why not? Would be good to hear your comment on it with your educated point of view. Uh, I'm just not into it. Uh, my son loves it though, Harry. So maybe I'll bring uh, my son on someday and he'll talk about it. He's very camera shy though. He's very camera shy. Mike Always Diary for $5. Comic Normie here. Thanks for the great video. Appreciate all your work. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. Okay, I've, I've got to run. Uh, travels ahead. And uh, a lot of stuff to do. I will get this up in the square up. And love you guys. Friday Night Tights tomorrow. Nick Ricada and the gang. Uh, week following after that. Uh, tentatively, Jeremy from the quartering, uh, but you know, he's a busy guy. Uh, but yes, and then we're working on uh, some uh, different types of guests. Uh, we're working on some merchandise. Uh, we've got a mug coming out very soon. Uh, I think we'll announce it tomorrow. I'll have it designed tomorrow. And uh, some shirts and some hoodies coming out too. So we finally got some merch coming. Is there anything else? Oh, Instagram. Mrs. Nerdrotic wants me to shout out my Instagram, which is Instagram.com slash Nerdrotic. It's run by Mrs. Nerdrotic. Uh, and there's giveaways. There's swag t-shirt giveaways and stuff. A lot of the reason I wasn't selling this stuff is because I was giving it away for a long time. Uh, hi, Gary. You uh, suggested a good Wolverine comic run. Um, Enemy of the State. I liked Enemy of the State by Mark Millar. John Platt. For two dollars and John Romita Jr. Check it out. Thank you for the for the two dollars super chat. Bear 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 Nerd Fund. Thank you for the ninety nine cents. I appreciate it. Will Gentry. Uh, I will. Uh, I'll be asleep by the time you you uh, get around to this. Thirteen days in, still feeling emotions I've not felt in over twenty years. Congratulations. Thirteen day. Thirteen days. Fucking sober for Will Gentry. Will Gentry. All right. I'm sorry I got a bug out, but I have to hang out with my son now. So. Um, you guys are wonderful. Thank you to the mod Rodics. Thank you to everyone who super chats. You help to keep the lights on. Thank you to everyone who donates and I'll see you tomorrow at 2 PM on Friday night tights. Ciao. Nerdrotic.com. <laughs>
I'll eat your ass. I will. I will eat your ass.